right, guys, we're live for episode two. Um, so in this episode, we're going to go through stock market terminology, all the basic ones. So I have a list of 15 most common stock market terminology uh, phrases or words uh, that everyone should know before they start investing. I'm also going to attach uh, some sources for uh, the Nasdaq.com. They actually have a really good glossary on there for all the stock market terminology that everyone should know. Um, it would it would take forever to go through everything, so we're just going to give you the 15 most common ones. So I'm going to go through that, and then Andrew's going to talk about what he's going to do. All right. So yeah, I'm going to talk about uh, what basically what the stock market is, because a lot of people don't even know what it means, what the stock market really means. So let's start off with that. I think it's a good way yeah. to to start the podcast. All right, so basically all the stock market is, for those of you guys that have no idea, is it's where companies get traded back and forth um, on a stock exchange. And basically any any company that's traded on a stock exchange is a public company. Um, so it's really as simple as that. You're just buying and selling very small amounts of companies back and forth. Um, so let's see. Um, so yeah, it's based on off of supply and demand too. So um, if people, this, the stock market will go up um, if more people are buying than selling, and it will go down um, if more people are selling than buying, basically. So it's really just based off that. Um, and then basically, I want to get into why people list their companies on a stock exchange in general. So the main reason is to to build capital. So when you put your company and when you list your company on the stock exchange, which means you have to go public, you're really just trying to, you're exchanging part of your company, let's say 20% or something for a bunch of people investing in you so that you can build the company up further. Um, and by the way, if you're confused on stock exchange or some of the things we're saying, we're going to cover that in the next segment. So yep. what a stock exchange is. Yep. So, all right. And then some, some interesting facts that uh, I just pulled off the internet um, because you really, I think it's cool to know uh, when the first stock was publicly traded or when the first company was uh, uh, listed on the stock market. Um, so the Dutch East India Company was the first publicly traded company um, to be listed on official stock exchange ever. So they were the first company that um, just like everyday people could go and buy. Um, before that, it was just private people selling back and forth. And and all they were was uh, a shipping company. They would mm -hmm. transfer goods back and forth to the different con uh, continents, and people would buy stock in their their ships, and they would help they would help them build more ships. So. Yep. And then um, I think you put the Amsterdam one in there. So if you the to yeah. So the Amsterdam Stock Exchange was the world's first official stock exchange. There's been other ones, but this is recognized as the first official one. So they became official in 1653. So that was kind of a cool uh, tidbit that we, mm -hmm. we wanted to throw in there. Yep. So yeah, it's just as simple as that. Basically, it's not really anything scary. The stock market isn't a scary term. It's just companies trading back and forth. People trading companies, small parts of a company back and forth. So yeah, that'll segue into Tony's part of the segment now. Yeah. So we're going to go over the 15 common stock market terms and all the terminology that you should know before you start investing. There's the common ones, that, like the, the first two, buy and sell, which is pretty self-explanatory. Everyone knows what buy and sell means. Uh, if you buy uh, into a position or a company or you sell a position of a company, that just means you're buying a position is you're buying into a company at a certain price point. So you'll hear people say, oh, I lowered my position. So that just means they're buying more of the stock when the stock price becomes lower than what they purchased. And let me just define the word stock because I don't think it's in here. A stock is just a small part of a company. That's all that means if anyone's confused yeah. on what a stock is. so Right. So that's buy and sell. Pretty easy. Uh, the next thing is you hear all the time, and it's a common phrase used throughout the world, actually, in other, in other ways, is blue chip companies or blue chip stock. So a blue chip stock is a stock that's like a large industry leading stock. It's a, it's a company that has a, or a company, I should say, and it's a company with a good reputation generally. Um, they're established. They've been around for a long time, stable, long history of success. Um, the term 
uh, blue chip actually comes from casinos because those are the highest value chips in a casino. So those are the best value uh, companies that you're buying. Uh, some examples are uh, Procter & Gamble, uh, Apple, Johnson & Johnson, Microsoft, Disney, uh, 3M, JP Morgan. Companies have been around forever that you know if you buy into them, they're not going to go out of business anytime soon. And it's a pretty safe play. Yeah, those are the so, safest investments for sure. They still could go out of business, but those are the could. safest, the biggest, and those are the least risky. So Yeah. There are some some blue a lot of blue blue chip stocks struggling right now because of COVID, but we will cover that in later episodes. So those are three. The next two are that are also very common are bull and bear. Bull market, bear market, right? So a bull market is just a market condition where investors are expecting prices to rise or you're expecting companies to make more profit. A bear market is when you're expecting pr- prices to drop or companies might lose some money. If maybe they'll be, there's some news that comes out that might affect a company or maybe there's good news that might affect a company. So bull market is, to, is when things are going up, bear market when things are expected to go down. Pretty simple. So volatility is the next one. That's also a very common phrase or word, which is actually very common right now for this year. We've had a lot of volatility. Volatility just means how, how fast the stock goes up or down in price. Mm-hmm. So there's some days where things can skyrocket $200 or go down $200 in a single day. There's a lot more of that now. I yeah. don't expect that to stay like that going into next year. Uh, the next then, thing. Can I just jump in really quick? Yeah. 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 So riskier stocks are often going to be more volatile. And this is in general. Riskier stocks will be more volatile. They'll swing up and down more. And then less risky stocks will move less. But this isn't always true. As we've seen in COVID, some of the most successful companies are very volatile right now. So. Yeah. So the next thing is dividend. Um, Dividend is basically when a company will pay you part of its earnings back to its shareholders. So if you just own a stock, you'll get paid some of their earnings every quarter, every every summer monthly, summer yearly. It depends on the company. Uh, and then that would lead us into dividend yield. Uh, the dividend yield is just um, the percentage of the current stock price of how much you're going to get paid. So mm-hmm. that's all that is. It's very simple. Um, and portfolio portfolio is a very common term. You hear people say like, oh, I, I added this to my portfolio. Well, what, what does that mean? Portfolio is just the collection of your stocks. That's all yeah. it is. Can I just jump in back with to the dividend year really quick to give an example? Yeah. Just so that it make, it's basically easier to understand. So let's say a st- you have a stock that's $100, um, exactly $100 I use because percentage is out of 100. Mm-hmm. So let's just use that. Um, so if the dividend yield is 3%, that means you'll get $3, which is 3% of 100 every year. So every quarter, they would pay you out um, 25% of $3, whatever that is, 75 cents, I think. So you'd get 75 cents every quarter um, for a total of $3 a year, 3% dividend, you know, three out of 100. But yeah, that's just an example. Right. So uh, uh, the next is passive investing. That's something that we, Andrew and I both do. Uh, I didn't start out with that, but... um, It's a buy and hold strategy, long-term strategy. Uh, uh, Most commonly, uh, the most common thing passive investors invest in are index funds. Well, that leads us to the next thing, index funds. Index funds are funds that offer immediate uh, diversification by, you you could have up to 500 stocks in a fund, such as the S&P 500 index fund, which basically is a fund that tracks the largest, um, so the S&P 500 fund is, they track the largest stocks, the largest 500 companies by market capitalization in the U.S. That's what the S&P 500 is. Um, so index funds could range in all kinds of things. It could be made up of um, dividend stocks. It could be made up of growth stocks. It could be made up of stocks and energy it could be anything there's an index medical field there's an index fund for every type of field or industry or commodity gold silver anything 
So that's index funds. And we're going to do more videos about index funds. This yeah. So like if you don't understand what an index fund based off that, don't worry. Index funds is probably index fund, mutual funds and exchange trade funds are probably the three most confusing terms. But basically what you need to know is an index fund is just basically, let's say for the S&P 500, it would be 500 companies and you get a small part of each one, basically, is as simple yeah. as I'm put it. So uh there's a really good app you can or a website called etf.com and you can look this stuff up uh you can type in uh, an s p 500 index fund and i'll show you all the companies in the fund and how much of a percentage every company makes up in that fund mm -hmm. so that's a good way to look that up um and we'll get into that in more videos too uh the next thing is brokerage which very common term a lot of people don't know what that means that's just a person or a firm that arranges transactions between a buyer and a seller. So, yeah. so Robinhood is a brokerage. Um, yeah. Acorns is a brokerage. Charles Schwab, TD, uh, TD Ameritrade, M1 Finance. And just to give an, so, exa an analogy, so like as a bank would keep your money safe, a brokerage is where your investments are. So that's like a good analogy to think of. And most broker, almost all brokerages are FDIC, uh, or not FDIC, uh, SPYC. No, I think it is. Insured? Uh, I can't remember. What is it? RFDIC. SIPC. SIPC, yeah. Security Investors Protection Corporation. Right. And they are FDIC insured. They offer a, a money market bank savings account or checking account. That mm -hmm. money will be insured, but not mm -hmm. the money you invest. Um, so the next one is exchanges, right? So stock exchanges. That's what we talked about a lot in the first segment is stock mm -hmm. exchanges. What's a stock exchange? So a stock exchange is the more, most important part of the stock market. It provides a means for the buyers and sellers to trade shares of a stock in companies that are registered for public trading. That's mm -hmm. pretty simple. So uh, I'm going to give you some examples of, of an ex stock exchange, the New York Stock Exchange, uh, the NASDAQ, the Tokyo Stock Exchange, Shanghai, Hong Kong. Those are the major stock exchanges out in the world today. Uh, so the most common misconception is the Dow Jones, S&P 500 are stock exchanges. Those are not stock exchanges. Those are index funds. Um, so that's that's basically all the 15 that we're going to go through today. Um, yep. And I'm going to once again, I'm going to attach that link to the video and it's going to give you uh, it's going to send you to Nasdaq.com, which is very reputable. And that has a glossary of stock market terms and definitions. So you and can me, see. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. So you can see all of the all of the uh, stock market terminology that you need to know. Also, so. very important. Um, so me and Tony both have referral links. I put them down in the description. So basically, I'm gonna put my Robinhood one. He's gonna put his Acorns one. Basically, if you click the Robinhood one, which is mine, uh, if you've never had a Robinhood account before, um, you will get a free stock, which could be up to like I think couple hundred dollars my friend who signed up got visa which is a 200 dollars stock which yeah i think that's like a one in 200 chance if i was reading that right on their website but you could get um expensive stocks like that just by literally clicking a link signing up um you're guaranteed a free stock no matter what and then for acorns if you sign up use his link you get uh, i think it's five dollars right yeah you'll get five dollars and then mm -hmm. uh it'll, it'll automatically it to start you out and that's what this starting investment is is five dollars yeah so it'll um, help we're gonna, both of us we're gonna go ahead. it'll help you and us mm -hmm. and we're gonna go through robin hood and acorns probably in our next video to discuss the pros and cons of those um yeah and acorns is more of a passive investing which we talked about before and robin hood is you kind of need to know what you're doing even mm -hmm. though it's easy you kind of need to know what you're picking but we'll go through that in future videos yeah so, so don't forget if you guys enjoyed Drop a like, drop a comment on uh, what you think we can improve. Um, I'm going to be getting a tripod and a new mic soon, so it'll sound a little better and it'll look a little better. Um, but yeah. Yeah, and if there's anything you didn't understand about what we said, you can ask us in the comment section and we can clarify it. Mm -hmm. and, oh, uh, and we are also on all major, major yeah. pod podcast platforms too. Also, you guys feel free to look up, if you still didn't understand what we said, feel free to look it up on your own. I think that was a big part, even though I watched a lot of YouTube videos when I first started, I also looked up a lot of it on my own too, just to 
uh, reaffirm what I was learning because um, there are, it's it's really confusing and sometimes you can't just get it all out of a YouTube video. So do a lot of research on your own too. It helps out a lot. But yeah. Yeah. So that's all for today. Yep. Thanks all for right. watching. Perfect. Uh, all right, that was pretty good.